host of Matthew Laugh Train Guy Segment Show. Also today in this segment, I'm here in Evansville, USA, sponsored by the Fargo Bus Company. So Mansville, USA is located on 1351 Main Street, New West in West Fargo, North Dakota, and is open Sundays, 12 to 5 and Mondays, and through Saturdays, 10 to 4. Sarah's and offered a unique glimpse into what life is in Cass County in early North Dakota was like in the mid 1880s, 1800s, when the Dakota Territory was first organized up until today. And also at one spot of the place you'll find a railroad museum. Emden Depot was built in 1900 by the Northern Pacific Railroad. Also, this depot was originally located in Emden, North Dakota, and was used for the Northern Pacific Railroad many years ago. The railroad built the depot to conduct railroad business where telegraph services were provided. The depot, which contained an office, passenger waiting room, freight dock and agent's quarters. The agent lived in the depot in a room that contained a small kitchen, bedroom, and private bathroom. The agent typically provided their own furniture and were charged one dollar a month for coal and lamp. One dollar in the 1900s would be roughly twenty-nine dollars today. Also, it it was even used for passenger service on the Northern Pacific Railroad many years ago, while pe where people would arrive on a train from somewhere or boarding a train going somewhere as well. Then later on, this depot was retired and then it was relocated from Embedin, Embedin, North Dakota, and then moved by truck to Bonanzaville, USA in West Fargo, North Dakota, and placed on display on the west side of the Railroad Museum's barn. And also you can even check out the interior of the depot as well. And you'll also find the ticket office and a bedroom, a table with an old-style cloth with... old-style tablecloth with the table set as well and the waiting room you can see as as well okay you can see here's a speeder right here this is the one in front of the passenger coach this one was built in Fairmont Minnesota and used on the Northern Pacific, it looks like. Might have, but yeah, it's displayed right here in the train display Bonanzaville. Okay, here's another speeder you see right here, but this one has no roof. This one was built by Fairmont as well. And this one probably was used for Northern Pacific and displayed right here 
from the trains play and it's on the same track as the snow plow. Sometimes the caboose is brought outside too. It's also built by Fairmount. It's usually Okay, you can see right here, this is a velocipede. As you can see, this handle right here, the crew would pull back to make it go. But velocipedes were difficult. It would even derail somehow, but couldn't go very far. Would cause that third wheel to let it derail. But nowadays, this velocipede is displayed in Bonanzaville at the in the train building, train display building as well, here in West Fargo, North Dakota. Okay, you can see right here, these are two Bahi maintenance boy flatbeds. This one says it was used for Burlington Northern, and I don't know what it was used it doesn't say, but I think it might have been used on Northern Pacific years ago, but you can see these are here displayed in the train building train display building here at Bonanzaville, USA, West Fargo, North Dakota. And also, you can see it's got some tools on it as well. What you see right behind me is the Northern Pacific Snowplow. The Northern Pacific Snowplow was built in 1907 and is a wedged snowplow. This snowplow's number is currently unknown and <clears throat> also it was used on the Northern Pacific Railroad in the winter time on snowy days many years ago and would push snow off the tracks and also a locomotive would push it as well. It would clear snow off the tracks as well. Then later on it was retired and came to be part of Bonanzaville, USA in West Fargo, North Dakota where it is on display today. Okay, going to show you the exhibits inside the train shed, the train display building, and walk around and show you around. So I'll get behind my camera and show you around. Okay, as I'm walking around, here's some old chairs and old seats. Look at this locomotive, the model of the Northern Pacific steam locomotive, a 484. None of those survived, though. Some empty cases, old tools. Wow, look at all that. And now we're going to walk around the passenger coach. And here's a set of train wheels in front of it. And here's the snow plow. I'm going to show you what's nearby it. Look at that wall. Here's a... And here are track pieces. Some pieces that were used like to drill through the tracks old machinery in some a northern pacific and also wilton sign that might have been used on the wilton depot burlington welcome to the dakota division have a safe trip and luggage cart luggage dolly and so much yeah what do you see right behind me is northern pacific 1360 northern pacific 1360 was built by pullman like around the 1940s or 1950s or 1960s and is a passenger coach northern pacific 1360 was used for the northern pacific railroad on streamlined passenger trains with the same paint scheme many years ago and would have passengers ride on board and also people would enjoy ride on board it as well then later on, Northern Pacific 1360 was retired and then came to be part of Bonanzaville, USA in West Fargo, North Dakota and can be seen on display in the railroad display barn at Bonanzaville, USA where it can be seen today and also you can even visit the interior of the car as well.
what you see right behind me is Northern Pacific 1628. Northern Pacific 1628 was built around the 1900s and is a wooden caboose. Northern Pacific 1628 was used on the back of freight trains many years ago as the train crew's office and also is one of the many wooden caboose Northern Pacific cabooses built as well. <clears throat> then later on, Northern Pacific 1628 was retired and then came to be part of Bonanzaville, USA in West Fargo, North Dakota, where it can be seen on seen today and also you can it can be found in the Railroad Museum's barn on the grounds as well and you can even visit the interior of it as well. Also, there are times it is sometimes brought out of the barn and seen outside as well. Northern Pacific 684 was built by the New York Locomotive Works in Rome, New York <clears throat> in 1883 and is the 39th steam locomotive built by that factory and is a 440 American type steam locomotive and is a C1 class steam locomotive. Northern Pacific 684 was used for the Northern Pacific Railroad a lot many years ago and originally was numbered as Northern Pacific 342 and it was one of 24 of this type bought by the railroad that year numbered from 338 to 349 and 680 to 681, 691 680 to 691 later on it was renumbered as Northern Pacific 684. This locomotive worked mostly on the Northern Pacific's main line in Montana and Idaho. It remained in main line's passenger service for nearly 25 years and was then assigned to the Billings Bridger passenger run. It was then sent further east to less mountainous terrain where it occasionally served <clears throat> tourist areas as a glamorous old-timer of the early steam era. By the late 1920s, the Northern Pacific had no need to, for the out-of-date steam and retired it from its career. Then it was nearly slated to be scrapped in 1925, but Northern Pacific 684 was overhauled and sold to the Nez Pierce and Idaho Railroad and renumbered for that railroad as Nez Pierce and Idaho 4 in 1928. The Nez Pierce and Idaho had only one locomotive and 13 miles of track between Craigmont and Nez Pierce, Idaho and apparently the locomotive could often only handle two cars at a time because of this steep grade. By 1945, the Nez Pierce and Idaho needed an engine that could haul heavier loads, and this locomotive was pushed off a spur of the Nez Pierce and Idaho tracks and abandoned in a field near Nez Pierce, Idaho. In 1948, an appeal was launched by the Northern Pacific to collect historic relics of its past, and the Northern Pacific 684 was located in a field where the Nez Pierce and Idaho had left it. The Northern Pacific bought the engine back from the Nez Pierce and Idaho Railroad in 1951. Despite missing parts, layers of rust, and peeling paint, only modern restoration was needed. Original blueprints were used during the restoration. One year after being... <clears throat> Rescued from a field in Idaho, Northern Pacific 684 was back in operation once again. Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, the, local, the Northern Pacific held various exhibitions exp, along its railroad system, displaying an old, the old engine. After years of traveling as an exhibit, the engine was stored in Northern Pacific, a Northern Pacific roundhouse for many years. Eventually, because of various railroad mergers, the engine needed to be removed from the roundhouse and it found a permanent home. Then later on, Northern Pacific 684 
was retired and was donated to Bonanzaville, USA in West Fargo, North Dakota in 1974 and seen on display in the railroad display building most of the time and there are sometimes the locomotive is brought out of the barn and standing beside the Emden Depot is also North Dakota I mean Nor Northern Pacific 684 is the only remaining Northern Pacific 440 left in the world today and can be found here at Bonanzaville USA where it is on display today Steam locomotive, I believe, is from the Northern Pacific. It's here displayed outside the train. Oh, it's a little rusty, but yeah. Catherine Depot was built like around the 1900s or the late 1800s. Also, this depot was originally located in Catherine, North Dakota and was used like for the Northern Pacific Railroad many years ago and was used for passenger service on the Northern Pacific Railroad where people would wait for a train and where they could <clears throat> buy their tickets and going somewhere traveling on the Northern Pacific Railroad or arriving on a train from somewhere coming into Catherine, North Dakota as well. Then later on, this depot was retired and then it was relocated from Catherine, North Dakota and then moved by truck to Bonanzaville, USA in West Fargo, North Dakota and placed on display on the east side of the Railroad Museum's barn and Inside it, you'll fi also find a model railroad displayed inside it as well. And also, <clears throat> the model railroad layout is ran by the Spud Valley Railroad Club as well. Okay, here we go inside. Here's some trains in this case. The Bob Dew Memorial, that's a steam shovel. And also, there's some behind that in the ticket office. And here's a HO and some pictures of trains right here. And wow, so much. Okay, I'm going to show you the model train display in the Catherine Depot. This is the Spud Valley, so here we go. Okay, so walking through the model railroad case. This is the HO model railroad. That's a Heisler over there. And this is probably a town in Montana or North Dakota, I believe. And it goes off, the model railroad goes off when You step inside, I believe. I've done this before, I know. Well, so much. Look at Northern Pacific Diesels with the Great Northern. A river with the car going in, being sunk with a man stranded. He's like crying for help. And police on the scene. And an ambulance to the rest. And some people there to rescue him. Wow, so much. Well detailed, isn't it? And there's a train facility right there. There's some steam engines and some tunnels. Isn't this very amazing? And look at that steam engine on the trestle bridge. I believe that might be the 261, which lives in Minneapolis. Yeah, so much. And this had these lights right here are decoration as well.
sign out. Until next time, all aboard.